Hey everybody, Mark from Guillotine Chemistry. We're gonna do another 360 video today. No students today. What I wanna do is, is do a 360 view of the factor label conversions needed to be successful at stuff like stoichiometry. I have a worksheet that you can get from the website if you want to follow along. So if you wanna do that first, you can try to work this grid up here. Place the four units, grams, AMUs, moles, and atoms in any of the corners, and then see what kind of conversions you'll need to get back and forth. Try that out and then come back and we'll go through that together. So there are four units we're trying to work with here. Grams, moles, AMUs, and like atoms. It doesn't really matter what corner you start at or which unit you start with, as long as all the conversions are only one step away from each other. All right, so for instance, if we start here with grams at this corner, right, and we work around this way, okay, we can have AMUs over here. Grams to AMUs is a one-step conversion. And then AMUs then can go, of course, to uh, grams, but AMUs can also go to atoms. And so we'll talk about atoms over here. And then finally then, the only unit left then is going to be the idea of going from atoms to the weird concept in chemistry called the mole. And we'll talk about that over here. So each one of these units has a different scale of existence they're used at. And each one of these units then also measure either amount or mass. So let's run through those quickly. Grams obviously is a unit of mass that we use at the laboratory level, all right? And so at our realm of existence, that makes sense. We wouldn't use things besides grams at our realm of existence. And by that, I mean, if we were to measure your height, and I said, but measure it in micrometers, like that would be a really silly answer. Or if I said, measure your height, but in light years, again, that would be funny because it's off by many orders of magnitude of what we need. And so the grams gives us a mass at the laboratory level that makes sense. Um, but when we come over here, all right, AMUs is a mass level at the atomic level, all right? So these are um, units that essentially go all the way back to John Dalton, way back at the turn of the 19th century. When he was looking at the relative mass of atoms, he didn't know their exact mass, but he knew their relative mass. And so if he were to think that hydrogen, for instance, was the lightest element, he said, well, I don't know what its actual mass is, but I'll give it a relative mass of one. And that's really the inception of atomic mass. Hydrogen's atomic mass is still about one. Carbon being about 12 times heavier has an atomic mass of 12, give or take. So that's the atomic mass unit. Grams is used at our laboratory existence, but the AMU is meant for a very different scale of existence. So when we get to that conversion, expect goofy conversions. I mean, over here, we have the idea of atoms themselves. So atoms are what we measure stuff at at the atomic level. If you've been balancing equations or anything else, you've probably been looking at atoms and molecules coming together in a balanced chemical equation to make some kind of product. Now, again, just some semantics here. Uh, if it's a single atom, that's fine. If it's more than one atom chemically combined, we usually call that a molecule, even if it's a diatomic molecule. But either term is fine. That's the amount at the atomic level. That's what we are essentially writing balanced equations in to begin with. So the last unit then that we are gonna deal with is the most mythical one of chemistry, and that's the idea of the mole itself. The reason we have moles is we need to take our ratios that we figured out at the atomic level and then scale them up to some massive amount so we can use them in the laboratory. And so we created the mole, which again is just a giant number, all right? It represents a huge chunk of atoms so that if I have one huge chunk and another huge chunk, then we have equal amounts. It doesn't really matter how many things are in there. So let's actually look at the conversions now. When we have grams over here and we're trying to get to AMUs, that's a mass-mass conversion, just like grams to pounds or grams to kilograms. These are substance-independent conversions. It doesn't really matter what substance you have. If I say you have you know, 15 grams of Schmegelamunga, how many pounds is that? You don't have to know what a Schmegelamunga is to convert grams to pounds. And that conversion is always the same. Uh, a long time ago, people realized that Dalton's atomic mass unit is essentially equal to a tiny sliver of a gram. So one AMU, one atomic mass unit, or Dalton, uh, sometimes written as U or DA, again, depending on who you're talking to, equals 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. It's just a sliver of a gram. Again, think about that. 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. All right, so when we're doing that conversion, right, that one AMU is just gonna be a tiny bit of a gram and you're jumping scales of existence. So if you're ever converting from grams to AMUs, expect a really silly answer. And to be honest, you'll probably never have to do that outside of a, of a factor label exam because 
We don't need to have those two realms of existence really talking in terms of mass conversions. That was, that's more of a trivia calculation. Now, keep that number in mind, 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th. In fact, take a moment and find the inverse of that number. That's right, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And many of you already know that's Avogadro's number. All right, that's not a coincidence now, and we'll get to that at one of the other conversions. So you don't need 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams anymore. You could say one gram is the equivalent of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd AMUs. Either one's fine, it depends on what you're comfortable with. So that conversion right there is a mass mass conversion. You're gonna get silly, goofy numbers. So if we keep going around the table, right, we now end up with AMUs to atom. And this makes a lot more sense. Many of you have been looking at this on the periodic table all year. This is the atomic mass of each element. So for instance, carbon's atomic mass is 12.01 AMUs. And what does that mean? That means if you had one tiny atom of carbon, then it would be 12 atomic mass units. Now you're like, well, I don't know what an atomic mass unit is. Well, you do now. Again, you could convert 12 AMUs to grams, and you will again get a tiny number, about you know, two times 10 to the negative 23rd grams. And that's why we don't measure atoms in grams directly, because no one wants to say all that. We just say 12 AMUs. But remember now, each atom has a different weight, right? Carbon's a certain size. Helium is four AMUs per atom. Gold is like 197 AMUs per atom. The way I like to think about this is, when you, when you have an atom to AMU conversion, think about atoms sort of like people, and then AMUs like how much they weigh. You're going to have more pounds. So if I weigh 190 pounds, one anical weighs 190 pounds, uh, the equivalent would be one atom weighs about 190 AMUs. And so that's a good way to sort of check yourself and keep yourself honest when you're converting from atoms to AMUs. And if you have a molecule, then you would just add up all the atomic masses. So hydrogen is one AMU, but diatomic hydrogen would be two, right? Water would be 18 AMUs per molecule. And if you haven't gotten a molar mass, don't worry about that one yet. But let's come back over here. Okay, and now we're getting to the idea of the mole. But now it's, this conversion is the mole as a number. We have a certain number of atoms, and then we need an amount we can use in the laboratory. And that's where the mole comes into play. Whatever you've balanced here with individual molecules and atoms is irrelevant to our realm of existence. Because I'm not gonna tease together two diatomic hydrogen and one diatomic oxygen to make you know, two molecules of water at my scale of existence. I need to scale that up. And so you just scale the recipe up. Instead of it being two to one, it could be two billion to one billion, but that's still not enough. We need a gigantic number to get atoms up to a scale that we can use in the laboratory. Again, I still wanna maintain that amount ratio, but I need an amount that's appropriate for our scale of existence. So they needed a giant number. And I'm oversimplifying the story, but they already had a big number. Remember back over here? If you come back over here, right, we already have a giant number. They could have picked any gigantic number, but the true brilliant move was to reuse that number. And so they said, well, you know what? And again, I'm oversimplifying the story a little bit. Why don't we just reuse that number? All right, and that is Avogadro's number. Anytime you wanna figure out how many items are in a mole, you use Avogadro's number. Again, just like grams to AMUs, this is a scale of existence conversion. So you're gonna end up with crazy weird numbers when you convert from atoms to moles or moles to atoms. So just understand this conversion is neat and it's fun, and this is the conversion chemists get wrapped up in a lot. We love talking about moles of things that are realm of existence. The best one I ever heard was a mole of basketballs being about the size of the planet. One more thing, by the way, about the idea of going from moles to atoms. If you get confused with these conversions when we're actually using the mole as a number, just fall back on dozen. Just say, okay, well, if I had a dozen of something, how many things would I have? 12. So if I have a mole of this, how many atoms do I have? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But you don't always use moles as a number, and that's what's different. So if we continue around, here's the thing that a lot of students have trouble grasping, is that the mole as a number is funny and interesting, but it's almost something we never use in chemistry. We really want to understand the mole as a mass. I'm not counting on individual atoms. I just need to know that I have enough atoms for this reaction and that this pile of atoms is some kind of ratio of that pile of atoms so I can get them to react. 
atoms are too small to count, so we have to mass them out. And so the molar mass is the conversion between grams and moles. And this is the most important conversion you need to know in chemistry, hands down. Because it allows us to connect the atomic idea of atoms, right? So we have this idea of these atomic ratios, right? With the mass of things that we measure in the laboratory. And the way that we connect these ideas is with the mole. And so it turns out that the molar mass of an object, the grams you need to get a mole of it, which would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of it, ends up being the exact same number as our atomic mass. These are the exact same number. Think about that. These are two different realms of existence, the atomic level and the laboratory level. And yet, an amount is the same number. So for instance, for carbon, one atom of carbon is 12 AMUs. At the laboratory scale, one mole of carbon is 12 grams. It's hard for me to explain how clever this is, that the atomic mass of an element is the same as its molar mass. And the reason that works is because of Avogadro's number. Remember what they did. They said, hey, we've already figured out what the conversion between AMUs and grams is, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. If we were to reuse that ratio to go from moles to atoms, if we reused Avogadro's number, then the proportion stays the same. Think about that, right? As mass scales up and amount scales up by the same number, the ratio doesn't change. And what number did they scale up by? 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now, I think that's a good place to end this video. I would love to talk more about the beauty of Avogadro's number um, and some of the places students mess up. Um, I will say one of the common mistakes when doing factor label problems is forgetting what number goes where. Uh, just just uh, you know, one more tip at the end of this, I would make sure you understand that when you set up your factor label problems, set up the units first and then plug in the numbers. Check out my other videos to see examples of this. But that's it. All right, that is a 360 view of some of the toughest conversions that students run into in first year chemistry. I'm telling you, this is it. This is what the people get crushed on. They can do molar masses. They can do empirical formulas. They can do stoichiometry problems. But when you ask students to make decisions about grams and moles and AMUs and atoms, they perpetually mess these up uh, because they never took the time to own it and understand the conversion. When you were young, you didn't know what a dozen meant, right? But some point in your past, you made the connection that a dozen was 12, and you've now owned that the rest of your life. I would encourage you now to take the time, work with it, put it on paper, and work with these conversions until you get when you go from moles to grams that you'll use the periodic table. When you go from atoms to AMUs, it's the same number, just at a different scale of existence. I would encourage you to work with pencil and paper until you get the conversion between grams and AMUs, as it's always the same, it's just another mass conversion. And that same conversion is used when you jump from moles to atoms. I can't do it for you, but hopefully this helped. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. Again, the resolution is low. The expectations were high. <laughs> Thanks for watching and have a great day.